I wonder who the hell thought this shit up. Maybe a straight stupid. He turns, flips the dial. He's one of those old fashioned TV sets. Back when dinosaurs walked the streets. Man is standing there in an old detective outfit. Could be Philip Marlowe. The scene is, apparently, some sort of top floor bedroom in an old house. Could be the Bates Motel. Possibly. Ed Gein is standing there with the shriveled cadaver of an old woman. Maybe it is Augusta Gein. Maybe it is someone he dug up from Plainfield Cemetery. Maybe it is just someone who kind of reminded him of his mother. Ed was peculiar that away. Maybe this is his cadaver paramour. He once saw an old movie with Robert's Blossoms called Deranged. It was the Ed Gein story for sure. Several grotesque scenes included Blossoms feeding gruel to his dying mother and opening a grave with a hideously rendered actress playing a cadaver come to life. But the movie was ultimately forgettable. He dances with his dead lover, caressing and kissing the rotten flesh, trailing the white, moth-eaten funeral dress behind them as they go, in the heated confines of his psychotic brain, to place beyond hope and pain and fear. You're so beautiful, my darling. So beautiful. You've been gone a long time, but now you've come back to me. I want to kiss you. Will you let me kiss you? His withered lips quiver as he places them upon the grinning, rotten teeth. Empty black pits stare into his own, unseen, unfeeling, except in his tortured imaginings, where this scene is something from a romantic feature, a love story born in the boneyard. Right now he is a man a hundred feet tall. Now he has mastered the two great mysteries of creation, love and death. The detective is unsure of what to do. Every instinct in his body tells him to shoot, to end it all quickly. Such an individual does not deserve to live. Nothing good could be born of this outrage to nature. His finger freezes, though, upon the trigger. The little ghoul is lost in his fantasy, overcome with his sad, mystifying emotion. A prisoner of a necrophilia's heartache. From somewhere, the old warped record warbles a forgotten tune, cutting through the ticking stillness of the house, the ghost of a forgotten song. I know that you love me, Dan. Say it. Tell me. I want to hear it from your own lips. Please. I'll be sweet. I'll be good. Mother always said I was an angel at heart. Bare minutes tick by, but to the detective they seem like hours. He suddenly hears a pounding at the door below, feels a great weight lifted off of his shoulders. He can hear the police call out below. Soon the decision will be taken from his hands. He knew he might forever regret not shooting this deviant. For the sake of his own soul, he would have been doing the world a favor. Police, open up. It seemed like only a click later that the door was busted in. He could hear footsteps upon the stairs. He knew it was all over. The ghoul was still cradling his sepulchral sweetheart in his mad, hopeless embrace. Drool was sliding down his chin, hanging in a glimmering streamer from his liver lips to the wide, psychotic grin of the rotted husk he imagined he had somehow reanimated. Sympathetic magic, he whispered to himself. He put his gun back in the waistcoat of his pants. What sounded like a herd of shot elephants was pounding up the stairs. The bedroom door blew in with a simple kick. Wood splintered and cracked, candles tipped over. Baumgartner bent forward to stamp them out. The old place would go up pretty quick like a tinder box. The electricity went out. An army of cops swarmed in. Leverman responded in slow motion, suddenly coming to the realization that there was even anyone else in the room. He had long ago forgotten about Baumgartner, whom he had only viewed as an annoyance. But the legion of policemen would not let him be. 
There was almost a brief pause before he was wrestled to the floor with a solid thump on the creaking old boards, and his corpse bride flew out of his arms and crawled into a darkened corner. But no one saw this but himself. Darling, don't leave me. He put out a thrusting arm. It was quickly grabbed and pulled behind him, locked and subdued. He could see her cower in terror. The warm flesh melt away in the darkness until she sucked up and shriveled and lost all semblance of life. Now what lay sprawled in hideous mockery in the darkened corner was nothing more than the death shell of some departed beauty, withered and worm eaten and decayed. Like they'd bring that many cops, he thought, and twisted in his seat. It was getting late, but he didn't want to miss the end. Two cops, one a front clothesman, so tough, the other a wicked one from a cop. Both had been over at one of those miniature refrigerators. He knew what must be inside. Jeffrey Dahmer stuff. The plain clothesman opens the refrigerator with a sort of knowing smirk. Maybe he's been through this routine before. Maybe not. Whatever was inside, maybe it was... Maybe it was human heads. Maybe it was a jar full of human vulvas. Hard in a saucepan. He didn't know, but the uniformed cop recoiled with horror. He put his hand over his convulsing mouth. Streamers of vomit rushed out from between his fingers. He imagined the color was deep red, bloody. Close up, something on the floor that could be vomit. Could be a clot of gore. 